I am so ancient I can't even name that music. I want to thank James O'Keefe for, for coming to us tonight and telling the truth about so many things, among other things being a, an image, a living, breathing image of what courage in the public square looks like. There, there should be no doubt about this. What's under attack across the board is something very simple. It's the entirety of the United States of America. The United States of America itself is what's being attacked, and along with it, Western civilization. And every element of what make up the United States, the American tradition, the American experiment, and every element of what makes up the, Western, the traditions of Western civilization, including, for example, something as simple and as fundamental as the scientific method. The scientific method, which is built on skepticism, not the acceptance of authority. We don't believe something because Aristotle taught it. We believe something because we can undertake empirical observation, test assertions. We can conduct experiments and replicate experiments objectively verify what people say is the truth, maintain records, compare notes, debate the meanings of the outcomes. How do you stop that? Well, one very simple way of stopping that is by stopping the debate. The pursuit of truth, like the pursuit of democracy, is dependent upon debate. And if you can crush the debate, you can crush the scientific method, and you can crush the American democracy. And that's precisely what the objective of the other side is. Why do they hate America so much? It's very simple. America is a great place. It's a place where human beings have created the most prosperous, the most inclusive, the most tolerant, the most charitable, the most free and open society in the history of the world. And we have done it without being told to do it by central planners, by governments, by fascists, by communists, and for the most part, by university professors. <laughs> we have done it simply because the American people left to their own devices, protected by a constitutional system that limits the powers of government, tries to, tries to allow us to live under the rule of law, and preserve the right of the people under the Ninth Amendment, powers reserved to, the, not, not specifically signed to the government, are reserved to the people to live their lives in accordance with the traditions that they have inherited, the legacy of Western civilization. That's what's under attack, and that's why it's under attack. And the, the, uh, James O'Keefe mentioned a very important name, a, a local Chicago name. He told us Saul Alinsky. The strategy, the, Alinsky was a tactician. It's true. He did dedicate his book to Lucifer. That's right in the dedication. It's there in print. And there's no question what his aim was. His aim was the deconstruction of the United States and the deconstruction of Western civilization because he hated them for the reasons that I've described. But the tactics that he lays out are tactics that anybody can use. And the tactics involve taking the fight to the enemy, to the enemy's doorstep, to the enemy's home. One of the most important, one of the most valuable of his tactics is exposure. Louis Lee Brandeis put it a different way. Sunshine is the best disinfectant. Well, that's what James O'Keefe is doing. That's what good science and good reporting do. They present the truth, put it out in the sunshine, and let a candid world, in the names of our declaration, assess what they mean by debating the meaning. If you can close off, the, you can choke off the debate, you can choke off the democracy, you can choke off the science, because democracy and science involve debate. Um, Exposing the truth is a wonderful tool, so is humor. I call your attention to the fact that uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, uh, on uh, John, John Stewart appearing on um, the, sh the television show of his uh, successor, managed in one night, in about five minutes, to change what we are allowed to say on national television and in national media about the coronavirus. I hope, you, I hope you saw either live or you've, you've seen subsequently that little shtick uh, by John Stewart. It went something like this. I will, I will paraphrase it. He said, there's recently been an outbreak of chocolatey goodness in Hershey, Pennsylvania. What do you think caused it? Did a, a steam crane mate with a cocoa pod? Or could there have been a leak from the chocolate factory? That one joke, which uh, you know, took, what, 15 seconds on national television, was followed within days 
by stories in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and other media, the electronic media as well, in inquiring with some skepticism about the story that the Chinese and the World Health Organization and others have told about the origins of the, the virus in Wuhan. Uh, and it shows you the power of humor to, make, to break ice, to break barriers, and make it possible for people to say things that they didn't think they could get away with saying before. If somebody with courage is willing to step forward and say something that you didn't think you could say, you were allowed to say, and get away with it, it makes it possible, it creates the freedom, the space for other people to do the same things. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the institutional mission of the Heartland Institute. To say things that people are not, think you're not, you're not supposed to be allowed to say because it violates some establishment rule about what's permissible to say about some subject. That you debate, that you challenge prevailing orthodoxy on an issue such as climate change, or you challenge prevailing orthodoxy on, on who ought to be in control of schooling, uh, it, of course, it sends shivers up the spines of the respective and involved establishments, but it frees other people. And that's why I'm, I'm very pleased to, to lead the board of directors of the Heartland Institute to, to build institutional support that allows James Taylor and all his colleagues, all of them with their fine minds and their loud mouths and their steel spines, to do the brave things that take them out, like Cameron Schulte and, and Samantha Fillmore, into, into meetings face to face with state legislators around the country and being on the other end of the phone when desperate state legislators are looking for somebody, for some advice. Where can I get a witness to testify on this issue? Where can I find a policy paper in somebody's back pocket? And I want you to know these people, these people sh shamelessly, fearlessly advise them. And, and, and by the way, also go to all the, uh, you know, I'm sure people in this room support many other organizations around the country, do, do fine work. Our, our allies, our colleagues, such as the Heritage Foundation, the Cato Institute, and many others in Washington and elsewhere around the country. I want you to know that Heartland people happily take advantage of the fine work, the hard work that those people do, and, sh and distribute their, their work product along with our own to get the best information to people who are in a position to take part seriously in the debates at the state legislative level, at the county board level, at the city council level, at the federal legislative level. When you're supporting Heartland, that's what you're doing. You're supporting getting that information out into the hands of the, of the people the people who are willing to stand up and take part in the debate. I wish I could tell James O'Keefe that his faith in the Chicago Sun-Times is well pl placed, that the Chicago Sun-Times is still ruck, uh, raking muck. They're dispensing it rather than raking it. Uh, I, I invite you to look at the Chicago Sun-Times published today. Well, worse, worse than that. James O'Keefe James opened his remarks by saying, that uh, we are living in a brutal dystopia, dot, 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 the train is ending at the gates of Auschwitz. Let me translate that into Chicagoese. We're going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> and, and the Chicago Sun-Times is happy to be the mouthpiece of that journey. The Chicago Sun-Times today published a full page advertisement, took money to publish a full page advertisement bought and paid for by the Communist Party of China. A full page dense print signed not by a party official, but by the Consul General of the People's Republic of China. Excuse me, I repeat myself. Of course, the Consul General of the People's Republic of China is a Communist Party official. There is no distinction between the party and the state, and by the way, the putative private sector of China. It's all one fabric, and it is a totalitarian fabric. The Chicago Sun-Times took money today to print a full-page advertisement on behalf of the Communist Party celebrating its 100th anniversary and the very, very happy life of the Chinese people in its gulags, in its re-education camps, under Mao Zedong's uh, 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 various re-education programs, his, his attempts to remake humanity, remake humanity in this horrifying totalitarian image. That is what the Heartland Institute exists to resist. I want to thank a, a couple of my colleagues who are here tonight who serve with me as uh, directors of the Heartland Institute. Our vice chairman, Donna Rook. Donna, would you stand, please? People need to know who you are. And our fellow director, Bob Buford. Uh, 
Thank you, Bob. And, and my, my predecessor in office, the immediate past chairman of our board, Harley Moody, who's come up from Arizona to, to be with us tonight. As you know, the Heartland Institute was founded, uh, somebody here, uh, maybe that funny bearded prophetic looking guy over there, <laughs> can tell me the precise date, but about 30, some 30, 30 odd years ago. And there's one fellow who's served on our board of directors continuously since that time, Jim Johnston, a great economist here in Chicago. Many of you know Jim. I'm sorry that Jim is not here tonight uh, because I wanted to say a lot uh, about Jim Johnston and what wonderful contributions he has made as a professional as well as a citizen to the life of our country and of this community, and specifically the Heartland Institute. He is the last member of our board of directors who goes back all the way to the founding when the late, great Dave Padden and that little funny, scraggly bearded kid from the University of Chicago <laughs> established the, uh, the Heartland Institute. D Jim, Jim was one of those, the first directors. He is a living connection back for us to, uh, to Dave Padden. I would be remiss if I did not also acknowledge tonight the presence among us. This, we're not here tonight to honor them, but they really are important people. They have been lifelong champions of the cause of liberty, giving their lives, their marriage, to this, their child, the Heartland Institute. And I'd like you to thank with me, Diane Bast and Joe Bast. They've, they've been re retired for a couple of years because they harbor the conceit that they have a second act left in life, and I bet they do. Watch that space. Uh, they're fabulous people. And I am very pleased that uh, uh, we have a fabulous, hardworking successor uh, in due course to Joe Bast, our current president, James Taylor. James, I want you to come back, please. Um, uh, this is the first uh, uh, um, annual dinner that James has been able to preside over. And James, I simply want tonight, in front of everybody, including your predecessor, Joe Bast, I simply want to commission you and tell you, you have a lot of hard work to do. It's a, it's a job of telling the truth, doing it fearlessly, doing it honestly, and doing it honorably. And you have our confidence that that's exactly what you're going to do as our president. So Joe, on to the battle. James, James, on to the battle. Thank you, Joe.